Well, hello, this is Vincent Green, and today is day number seven of week number one of our 52-week reading through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and also making some devotional comments along the way. Today, we're going to be reading from Genesis chapter 22 to Genesis chapter 24. Chapter 22. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told his servants or told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little farther. We will worship there and then we will come right back. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife, as the two of them walked on together. Interesting story so far, isn't it? This story pictures the coming of Christ, him being sacrificed as an offering for us, the promised seed, the promised Messiah mentioned in Genesis 3. God had given Abraham a son. And now he's telling Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. And Abraham listens and obeys. It's interesting that he says, the boy and I will travel a little farther. We will worship there, and then we will come right back. It's interesting that he says it that way, that we will come right back. There's other things going on here, but the story is getting very interesting. Well, as the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son, Abraham answered. And they both walked on together. When they arrived at the place where God had told them to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. So he's obeying the Lord. But at that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Like I said, a lot's happening here. Isaac is willing to be laid on the altar. And Abraham is willing to kill his son as a sacrifice. But God never had any intentions for Abraham to actually do that. It says at the beginning that God is testing Abraham's faith. And that's what's happening. That's what's taking place.
Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh Yireh, which means the Lord will provide. And to this day, people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. You know what's interesting? It was on that same mountain where our Lord Jesus was sacrificed for us. And the Lord provided himself to be the sacrifice for us. A lot of foreshadowing in this chapter of what you find in the Gospels. In my inductive journey series with Genesis, as of this point, I haven't got here yet. I'm not at this chapter yet, but I'm looking forward to the day that I am and we can go more in detail with this chapter, with what is said here. Examine the story in detail. It's a wonderful story. Then the angel of the Lord called again to Abraham from heaven. This is what the Lord says, because you have obeyed me and have not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number, like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies. And through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. All because you have obeyed me. Then they returned to the servants and traveled back to Beersheba, where Abraham continued to live. Soon after this, Abraham heard that Milcah, his brother Nahor's wife, had borne Nahor eight sons. The oldest was named Uz. The next oldest was Buz, followed by Kimuel, the ancestor of the Arameans, Kesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jidlaf, and Bethuel. Bethuel became the father of Rebekah. In addition to these eight sons from Milcah, Nahor had four other children from his concubine, Ruma. Their names were Teba, Gaham, Tahash, and Makah. Chapter 23. When Sarah was 127 years old, she died at Kiriath Arba, now called Hebron, in the land of Canaan. There Abraham mourned and wept for her. Then leaving her body, he said to the Hittite elders, Here I am, a stranger and a foreigner among you. Please sell me a piece of land so I can give my wife a proper burial. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Listen, my lord, you are an honored prince among us. Choose the finest of our tombs and bury her there. No one here will refuse to help you in this way. Then Abraham bowed low before the Hittites and said, Since you are willing to help me in this way, be so kind as to ask Ephron, son of Zohar, to let me buy his cave at Machpelah, down at the end of his field. I will pay the full price in the presence of witnesses, so I will have a permanent burial place for my family. Ephron was sitting there among the others, and he answered Abraham as the others listened, speaking publicly before all the Hittite elders of the town. No, my lord, he said to Abraham, please listen to me. I will give you the field and the cave. Here in the presence of my people, I give it to you. Go and bury your dead. Abraham again bowed low before the citizens of the land, and he replied to Ephron, as everyone listened, no, listen to me. I will buy it from you. Let me pay the full price for the field so I can bury my dead there. Ephron answered Abraham, my Lord, please listen to me. The land is worth 400 pieces of silver, but what is that between friends? Go ahead and bury your dead. So Abraham agreed to Ephron's price and paid the amount he had suggested, 400 pieces of silver. 
weighed according to the market standard. The Hittite elders witnessed the transaction. So Abraham bought the plot of land belonging to Ephron at Machpelah near Mamre. This included the field itself, the cave that was in it, and all the surrounding trees. It was transferred to Abraham as his permanent possession in the presence of the Hittite elders at the city gate. Then Abraham buried his wife Sarah there in Canaan, in the cave of Machpelah, near Mamre, also called Hebron. So the field and the cave were transferred from the Hittites to Abraham for use as a permanent burial place. You see, this is an interesting chapter. Sarah dies and is going to be buried. By the end of it, Abraham actually owns a piece of land in this land that God promised him. He actually owns a piece of land. Another foreshadowing of how the nation of Israel is going to come into this land and this land will be theirs. Chapter 24. Abraham was now a very old man, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. One day Abraham said to his oldest servant, the man in charge of his household, Take an oath by putting your hand under my thigh. Swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not allow my son to marry one of these local Canaanite women. Go instead to my homeland, to my relatives, and find a wife there for my son Isaac. The servant asked, but what if I can't find a young woman who is willing to travel so far from home? Should I then take Isaac there to live among your relatives in the land you came from? No, Abraham responded. Be careful never to take my son there. For the Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and my native land, solemnly promised to give this land to my descendants. He will send his angel ahead of you, and he will see to it that you find a wife there for my son. If she is unwilling to come back with you, then you are free from this oath of mine, but under no circumstances are you to take my son there. So the servant took an oath by putting his hand under the thigh of his master, Abraham. He swore to follow Abraham's instructions. Then he loaded ten of Abraham's camels with all kinds of expensive gifts from his master, and he traveled to distant Aram Naharim. There he went to the town where Abraham's brother Nahor had settled. He made the camels kneel beside a well just outside the town, and it was evening, and the women were coming out to draw water. You say, why would Abraham send him to Nahor? Remember a couple chapters above, in chapter 22, he finds out about Nahor and and all the children, and, and that's where he wants his Isaac's wife to come from. So he's sending them there, sending his servant there. O oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, he prayed, please give me success today and show unfailing love to my master Abraham. See, I am standing here beside this spring, and the young women of the town are coming out to draw water. This is my request. I will ask one of them, please give me a drink from your jug. If she says, yes, have a drink, and I will water your camels too, then let her be the one you have selected as Isaac's wife. This is how I will know that you have shown unfailing love to my master. You can see the devotion that the servant has for Abraham. Before he had finished praying, he saw a young woman named Rebekah coming out with her water jug on her shoulder. She was the daughter of uh, Bethuel, who was the son of Abraham's brother Nahor and his wife Milcah. Rebekah was very beautiful and old enough to be married, but she was still a virgin. She went down to the spring, filled her jug, came up again. Running over to her, the servant said, Please give me a little drink of water from your jug. Yes, my lord, she answered, have a drink. And she quickly lowered her jug from her shoulder and gave him a drink. When she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too until they have had enough to drink. So she quickly emptied her jug into the watering trough and ran back to the well to draw water for all his camels. 
The servant watched her in silence, wondering whether or not the Lord had given him success in his mission. Then at last, when the camels had finished drinking, he took out a gold ring for her nose and two large gold bracelets for her wrists. Whose daughter are you? he asked. And please tell me, would your father have any room to put us up for the night? I am the daughter of Bethuel. She replied, my grandparents are Nahor and Milcah. Yes, we have plenty of straw and feed for the camels and we have room for guests. The man bowed low, bowed low and worshipped the Lord. Praise the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, he said. The Lord has shown unfailing love and faithfulness to my master. For he has led me straight to my master's relatives. The young woman ran home to tell her family everything that had happened. Now Rebecca had a brother named Laban who ran out to meet the man at the spring. He had seen the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrists, and he had heard Rebecca tell what the man had said. So he rushed out to the spring where the man was still standing beside his camels. <coughs> Laban said to him, Come and stay with us, you who are blessed by the Lord. Why are you standing here outside the town when I have a room all ready for you and a place prepared for the camels? So the man went home with Laban, and Laban unloaded the camels, gave him straw for their bedding, fed them, and provided water for the man and the camel drivers to wash their feet. Then food was served. But Abraham's servant said, I don't want to eat until I have told you why I have come. All right, Laban said, tell us. I am Abraham's servant, he explained, and the Lord has greatly blessed my master. He has become a wealthy man. The Lord has given him flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle, a fortune in silver and gold, and many male and female servants and camels and donkeys. When Sarah, my master's wife, was very old, she gave birth to my master's son, and my master has given him everything he owns. And my master made me take an oath. He said, Do not allow my son to marry one of these local Canaanite women. Go instead to my father's house, to my relatives. Find a wife there for my son. But I said to my master, What if I can't find a young woman who's willing to go back with me? He responded, The Lord in whose presence I have lived will send his angel with you and will make your mission successful. Yes, you must find a wife for my son from among my relatives, from my father's family. Then you will have fulfilled your obligation. But if you go to my relatives and they refuse to let her go with you, you will be free from my oath. So today, when I came to the spring, I prayed this prayer. Oh Lord, God of my master, Abraham, please give me success on this mission. See, I am standing here beside this spring. This is my request. When a young woman comes to draw water, I will say to her, please give me a little drink of water from, the, from your jug. If she says, yes, have a drink, and I will draw water for your camels too. Let her be the one you have selected to be the wife of my master's son. Before I had finished praying in my heart, I saw Rebecca come out with her water jug on her shoulder. She went down to the spring and drew water. So I said to her, please give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jug from her shoulder and said, yes, have a drink and I will water your camels too. So I drank and then she watered the camels. Then I asked, Whose daughter are you? She replied, I'm the daughter of Bethuel, and my grandparents are Nahor and Milcah. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrist. Then I bowed low and worshipped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, because he had led me straight to my master's niece to be his son's wife. So tell me, will you or won't you show unfailing love and faithfulness to my master? Please tell me yes or no, and then I'll know what to do next. Then Laban and Bethuel replied, The Lord has obviously brought you here, so there's nothing we can say. Here is Rebecca. Take her and go. Yes, let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has directed. When Abraham's servant heard their answer, he bowed down to the ground and worshipped the Lord. Then he brought out silver and gold jewelry and clothing and presented them to Rebekah. He also gave expensive presents to her brother and mother. Then they ate their meal, and the servant and the men with him stayed there overnight. But early the next morning, Abraham's servant said, Send me back to my master. 
But we want Rebecca to stay with us at least ten days, her brother and mother said. Then she can go. But he said, don't delay me. The Lord had made my, has made my mission successful. Now send me back so I can return to my master. <coughs> well, they said, we'll call Rebecca and ask her what she thinks. So they called Rebecca. Are you willing to go with this man, they asked her. She replied, yes, I will go. So they said goodbye to Rebecca, sent her away with Abraham's servant and his men. The woman who had been Rebecca's childhood nurse went along with her. They gave her this blessing as she parted. Our sister, may you become the mother of many millions. May your descendants be strong and conquer the cities of their enemies. Then Rebecca and her servant girls mounted the camels, followed the man. So Abraham's servant took Rebekah and went on his way. Meanwhile, Isaac, whose home was in the Negev, had returned from Beer Lehi Roy. One evening as he was walking and meditating in the fields, he looked up and saw the camels coming. When Rebekah looked up and saw Isaac, she quickly dismounted from her camel. Who is that man walking through the fields to meet us? She asked the servant. He replied, it is my master. So Rebecca covered her face with her veil. Then the servant told Isaac everything he had done. Then Isaac brought Rebecca into his mother Sarah's tent. She became his wife. He loved her deeply, and she was a special comfort to him after the death of his mother. Very long chapter, but a beautiful chapter to see that God is providing a wife for Isaac and Rebecca. There's also some more foreshadowing. This uh, blessing is like a prophecy. May your descendants be strong. Who are the descendants going to be? The nation of Israel. Conquer the cities of their enemies. It's, it's a foreshadowing of, of the nation of Israel coming back into the promised land and what will happen in the book of Joshua, what we will see in the book of Joshua. And so a lot of foreshadowing taking place. A wonderful chapter. Let's pray. Dear Lord, you give us so many pro promises. We see so much in your word that you promised many years ago and you foreshadowed it with, the, with Abraham sacrificing his son Isaac. Lord, of you sending your Son into this world to die on a cross for us. And Lord, how you make provisions and how you oversee everything. You provided the, the, the ram for Abraham. You are the God who provides. You provide a place for Sarah to be buried. You provide a a wife for, for Isaac. You provide for us. You take care of us. Lord, you are God. And we're to live in the light of your provisions. We're to live in the light of your sovereignty, of your lordship, of your majesty follow you each and every day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We know there's so many deep truths within these chapters that we just read. And we thank you for the opportunity we have to study these chapters deeper and learn all the truths that you have for us. But Lord, you are wonderful. You are our Lord and our God. And to you we bow. To you, we, to you alone we worship. May you receive all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.